Jeff was, was one of those guys that uh, it, it was like he was a mythical figure in this industry and I was like, who is, who is this guy? You know, he's a, I call him a bone vivant. He, he's kind of that Oz figure in, in the industry, right? You know, so he's kind of back there behind the curtain. He's such an easy person to relate to. He's just great to be around. And boy, in an industry of characters, he is sure one of them. Who's the guy in Pulp Fiction? They bring in the wolf to kind of fix the situation. And he is the guy behind a lot of these brands. And he's, he's you know, he, he's, the, he's the puppet master. Uh, to know Jeff, is he, he's not overtly cuddly like a teddy bear um, he's a pretty straight shooter and I won't say that he you know sat down and held my hand and said you know it's gonna be okay because that would not be Jeff at all but what Jeff did is said you gotta follow your gut just do it do what you know how to do he was very bullish and was always there as a resource. He's been amazing. His transparency, his honesty, and, and his charisma has, has propelled him to where he is. Uh, and I think that uh, I would not like him to hear that part because he'll get a bigger head, but whatever, he, it is the truth. He's done deals with Bacardi and Diageo, craft producers, celebrities, and athletes, and all types of stakeholders, including startups. He's more than willing to share his unique experiences and access to the inner workings of the three-tier system to guide those who are considering investing in bourbon futures. Jeff's helped me every bit of the way. He's been a great friend and a, a good partner to me in business uh, as a member of our board, but even bigger than that, just all of the things that he knows in our industry and, and uh, the people he knows in our industry have been important to me. Uh, Jeff is a, is a key player for sure in my experience. I've been with Bardstown Bourbon Company since it really was an idea. Um, David Mendel and Dan Lin knew me from uh, back in the day when we both had competing vodka brands. And they set out five years ago to create this distillery in Kentucky uh, and rang me up and asked me if I would help them uh, find a potential uh, investor in the distillery. And I drove up there and met them in a construction trailer in the middle of a cornfield. And uh, we agreed, you know, I agreed to help them out and everything and uh, ended up bringing different people to the party to talk to them. And we ended up uh, doing a transaction with Constellation, and Constellation owns a piece of Bardstown. I think that Brindiamo is both a connector and the secondary market for um, aged barrels. His network is really valuable, but he's also just a very thoughtful business person, um, and he never stops. So uh, he has an energy that is infectious. Jeff has just been a go-to guy that he he knows where to go. You know, he knows other companies that has products that, that we can get. And Jeff is just very, very knowledgeable guy that, that is willing to help us and anybody else to, to make sure that the industry itself survives and, and you know, strives. Mark Irwin and Ingrid and Justin and Susie, they're the team. All, all I do is provide them with alternative advice. The team has to manage it and make their own decision, right? I, I am not really active in day-to-day -day decisions and things like that, but there are times when they want a different opinion and that's where I come in. Bardstown Bourbon Company is only one of many success stories in which Jeff and Brindy Amo have played a role. Angel's Envy is a wonderful brand created in Louisville by the Henderson family. Um, I originally met Wes Henderson back in the day. Uh, we hit it off and um, have uh, continued to be friends with him and his son Kyle, who's great. He got looped in with my dad at probably an ADI conference or a discus meeting, something like that. Um, Jeff's been pretty well known in the industry. He's been in and out of a few different companies. and. 
when they, when they created this Brindiama group and started consulting and, and helping people source barrels and really you know, ideate and do all the acquisitions and everything else, we didn't need a lot of that. Really our need was, hey, we've got this small brand. Bacardi had just uh, invested and, and purchased the company and we needed some support to help grow. Um, Bacardi is very good at growing, but they have never done a whiskey before, or at least an American whiskey. You know, they had scotch and rum and vodka and tequila, but this is the first American whiskey. And Jeff had a really good knowledge of some of the players in the industry who may or may not be able to help us. Um, so we connected with him and the main purpose, the most of our relationship is about sourcing very, very specific aged whiskeys to meet profiles that we're looking for for special releases. Um, so, you know, we'll go to him and, hey, we're looking for a, this mash bill, this barrel type of a, call it seven, eight year old whiskey. We want to lay it down in another cask. Can you help us find that? Really what we do for them is help them fill the needs and, and Angel's Envy actually takes the product and they put it in port barrels and it ages. So it changes um, for, from anything that we've given them. But uh, it's a great operation. I remember when it was being built there uh, and it's been, it's been fun to see it grow. And now as you know, that's continuing to grow and we continue to work with him, you know, we're looking at him for possible consulting and, and just all the other things that he offers is absolutely incredible. I met Jeff about four years ago in Nashville. He uh, had visited us, uh, visited our distillery here in Louisville, and uh, we had a whiskey food pairing event in Nashville. You know, we immediately hit it off. I just, um, I thought that he's so knowledgeable, very well dialed in and connected to what the industry is about. And then on top of it, we both happened to be from Chicago or lived in Chicago for a long time, so there was that synergy as well. Uh, Cave is uh, another Chicago boy like me. Uh, we hit it off back in the day when he was starting Rabbit Hole. You know, he was very helpful in helping me find some personal um, barrels for my own collection, um, some of them which we now have used for Rabbit Hole. Um, but when I started the distillery as a producer, we were able to connect because we do um, quite a bit of contract distillation, or at least we used to do a lot more before when we first started. So it's a combination of both as procurement of barrels, but also from a standpoint of contract distillation for other folks that want to get into business. And he obviously uh, manages and kind of arranges that as well. Much like uh, anywhere else, uh, I supply and help Cave source special barrels and special product uh, for his gaps in, in his inventory. Uh, I probably am a consigliere for him as well. Uh, and uh, just, we, we bounce ideas, we bounce opportunities, uh, lots of uh, uh, fun conversations. As an immigrant to come to the States and be part of what is quintessentially American is just, uh, honestly, it gives me goosebumps to think about it. Rabbit hole, I'm able to leave a legacy that uh, hopefully will be here long after I'm gone and be part of uh, my adopted home. And it's not just a few distilleries or brands that the Brindiamo Group has assisted. They offer expertise to a variety of companies and individuals. So in the early days, we knew nothing about the business. I didn't even know why whiskey was brown and tasted so good. Um, we didn't know what we didn't know, and we were very fortunate to meet and come into contact with a lot of experts and, and industry veterans who were able to help guide us on our path. They have great family history, great family lineage in distilling, and Charlie and the family wanted to recreate this. I, I heard his name and was told, you know, you're in Nashville, you're in Middle Tennessee, you gotta meet Jeff Hotmeyer. Multiple people had said that and that he you know, was a big spirits guy in the area. Back in the day when they were starting looking for capital, looking for investment, and it was a pretty um, rough presentation and, and rough financials and uh, lots going on. I mean, I remember the space that they're in and there wasn't a floor, it was just gravel. And I mean, I, mean, I, I 
it was I was like, what are you guys doing? I would say, you know, there there was a time where we were in a tight situation, and and I, I talked to Jeff and of asked for his advice and of course he said he could help out and uh, and he did. In the end, they, the Nelson boys did a great job bringing it together, recreating it, taking it, taking it to the next step, uh, finding a, a great partner in Constellation and uh, really continue uh, to evolve with uh, some really great Tennessee product. I like to say that uh, I I probably said this to him, I was like, oh, great, man. So we do all the hard work and you get all the credit, huh? And he said, well, hey, you want it out of the situation. So it wasn't the easiest path, and, uh, but it, it, it was one that worked. And I don't know if anything else would have worked. So uh, he got us out and, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Dixon Dedman is the owner of the historic Beaumont Inn near Harrodsburg, Kentucky, that boasts an award-winning restaurant as well as an acclaimed bourbon brand. Jeff helped Dixon grow his brand beyond the bluegrass state. I think one of the one of the greatest qualities about Jeff, at least on, from my you know perspective, is that that Jeff is a very very loyal individual. Jeff has helped me you know, both grow my brand, partner with somebody who could help me take it outside of Kentucky. Um, Jeff helped me, you know, with, with kind of our, our liquid strategy and, and, and that type of thing. The guys at Bardstown Bourbon Company actually introduced me to him, gave me one of the temporary offices upstairs. We met with, I met with Dixon at Bardstown because he wasn't sure what he wanted to do with the brand. Uh, and I just looked and I said, eh, just sell it. Let's sell it. And he goes, well, I don't, you know, I don't think we'll get enough and this and this. I go, ah, we'll get enough. Don't worry about it. Uh, and we went down the path and we sold it and he was really happy. So he's, he's helped me in many ways, but probably more significantly than anything, it, it's just kind of on a, on a personal level as a, as a sounding board and, 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 an, and an advisor.